Did you know that rocks are fantastic storytellers? Did you know that rocks hold the secrets of the universe? Didn't think so. Let's take this rock, for example. It's plain, small, kind of simple looking. It's definitely not worth any money, and there are literally billions of rocks just like it all around the planet. So what gives this rock the ability to grow our understanding of the universe? What gives this rock a voice? And why can we say the same for every other rock on the planet? Why do the stones that you skip across a lake matter? What gives the grains of sand on a beach meaning? When we just look at this rock, we're missing something. We have to listen to it, too. A few years ago, I learned how to give rocks voices. This one's story starts a few miles beneath the Earth's surface in a superheated, pressurized chamber full of molten rock. Gas and a mush of minerals that we know as magma coexisted, waiting. As the amount of gas increased due to the melting of the rocks, the thing became an, a giant pressure cooker. The gas and magma eventually found a weakness in the surface above, and lava erupted, oozing out. It formed fiery rivers that reshaped an entire landscape. As the lava cooled, it was no longer one solid unit. Wind and water began to erode the jagged edges and break off boulders into smaller and smaller pieces. Wind and water again carried seeds that took root in the new earth formed by the erosion. Small animals like rabbits, birds, lizards, and mice began to make their homes between the rocks. They found fresh plants to eat, and they formed communities. Coyotes and bobcats came to hunt the small animals, and bighorn sheep learned to live off the sparse nourishment provided by this young, fresh landscape. Eventually, this rock broke off of that lava flow, but not before it had witnessed hundreds of generations of new life take hold and flourish. This rock is connected to all of us. This rock is connected to all of us. Holding this rock is essentially holding infinity in the palm of my hand. That's because this rock is part of a tremendous system, one that has been in place since billions of years ago when the first rocks coalesced on the Earth's surface and below. It's also part of countless smaller systems that, that exist for maybe only a few minutes, a few days, the lifespan of a mosquito that perhaps landed on this rock to rest for just a moment 20,000 years ago. Yes, this rock holds the secrets of the universe, and so does every other rock. But also, so does every house cat, every BMW, and every single one of you. We are all connected and we are all made of the same stardust. The moment that you realize that everything is connected is the moment that you become ready to enter what I call the planetary renaissance. So that is the natural evolution of our society. It is what will see us through the challenges that we're going to face in the coming few centuries. Our planet is sick. And I don't just mean in an environmental sense. We are faced with the never-ending realities of war, with the challenge of feeding seven billion people and counting, and with the growing awareness that we now have more choices than ever before, and we don't have no concrete idea of what to do with them. We are all searching for connection, for meaning, for purpose. We all want to make a difference in the world, and we're searching amidst fear, confusion, and the feeling that we are just one in seven billion. I co-founded Blueprint Earth, a new kind of environmental science organization to jumpstart this planetary renaissance. Before my life as a geologist and an explorer, I studied English literature and history. I explored countless lives by diving into the stories of our society. I switched from humanities to science because I was searching for larger scale connections and I had questions that demanded answers. 
in search of those answers, I raced horses across the wild expanses of Mongolia. I piloted a submersible to the base of an undersea active volcano. I scoured the Andes for clues about the Little Ice Age. I sampled flowing lava from an active volcano, the world's most active volcano, let's be precise. And I was able to explore the ancient basins of the Australian outback, and I even chased narco traffickers through rural Mexico. They took my rock hammer and I really needed it back, okay? <laughs> Maybe not the best decision, but all of these adventures bore fruit, okay? And I began to find answers to my questions. But I also realized what they really were. One is, how do we connect to our entire planet, now, we as a species? And how do we uncover the intricacies of the systems holding it all together? I discovered why we need a renaissance for the modern era. Renaissance means rebirth. Rebirth on a massive scale is what happened during the Italian Renaissance. It was a transition from a period of misery in the Dark Ages to an increased sense of connection with the arts, ancient cultures, science, and literature. It produced the quintessential Renaissance man, Leonardo da Vinci. He dreamed of flying machines. He designed buildings. He studied the human form and painted masterworks. His desire, his yearning for connection to the world around him, past, present, and future, made him the ideal crucible for a rebirth, for a renaissance. So what then would a planetary renaissance look like? A planetary renaissance is the people of Earth seeing our world as a series of interconnected systems, each reliant on the others, and connecting with that world. Finding the planetary renaissance means we have to find those connections. We have to discover what it is that connects us to everything. So just think about that for a moment. You share DNA with every single person who has ever lived. You also share DNA with elephants, narwhals, jellyfish. Your body contains arsenic, just like rocks from volcanoes. Everywhere you look, intricate connections spring up, a cosmic balancing act. You move in and out of these systems with ease, but connecting with them is what will make the world a better place. I have found that there are three traits within us as a species that will ignite this planetary renaissance. The first is what I call inspiration dependence. People crave inspiration, a reason for getting out of bed, for working hard, and for caring. Inspiration serves as a motivator for exploration, discovery, and innovation. Our minds demand inspiration the way that our lungs demand oxygen. So, what we often forget is that anyone can inspire. We see that people explore, discover, and innovate all the time, but are those people us? Yes. Yes, they are. Anyone can be an inspiration. We can find inspiration in watching a sunset, in seeing children play, in hearing crickets at night, but we also get inspiration from pushing through fear, past anger, and around obstacles, big or small. Every time you take a new way home, that's exploration. When you try a new recipe in the kitchen, that could lead to a discovery. Finding new music that ignites your passion, that is passion. The key is to share the inspiration, because that is what builds connections. And sharing fulfills our need for inspiration, and connections are what make the world a better place. My nonprofit, Blueprint Earth, we inspire in totally unexpected ways. It inspires me, and it inspires the people who work with it. My job is to wrangle scores of scientists and students who are working to catalog every aspect of the environment all around the Earth from the microbes in the soil to the atmosphere up above, literally everything in it, in our target areas. Right now, we are in California's Mojave Desert. We are studying the geology, biology, hydrology, and atmosphere. We're trying to understand them well enough so that 
we can recreate that environment in a controlled setting, like a desert in a box that functions. We're trying to safeguard the planet for the future, like the Global Seed Vault or DNA banks, but on a much, much grander scale. On one of our first expeditions, one of our biology students told me that she thought that she would have to be a nurse because that is what her school's biology program focused on. I handed her my rock hammer and some safety goggles, of course, and said, go smash that rock over there. Her face absolutely transformed when, when that dull whitish rock split open to reveal beautiful sparkling pink crystals. She had never even thought that field work was an option for her. And yet there she was diving right into geology as a biologist. Now she's working to make a career out of field biology. All she needed was inspiration and she found it at the intersection of different sciences combining to give her the opportunity to try something new. The planetary renaissance will be fueled by people exactly like her, the ones who aren't content with settling. The second trait that is going to fuel the planetary renaissance is the ability to crowdsource. We now have unparalleled collaborative opportunities. We can retrieve information from far-flung places in an instant. That's pretty great. <laughs> so identifying the systems at work becomes much easier when you realize that nothing exists in a vacuum. If I wasn't here to tell you that that rock is basalt, hooray, you could ask other audience members. You could look it up on the internet. You would crowdsource a solution, just like people crowdsource money, ideas, and inspiration. So the trend in sciences and humanities has been towards increased specialization. And one of my favorite quotes is from Robert Heinlein, and the shortened version is he says, specialization is for insects. Well, I don't believe that all specialization is bad, but I do think that there are many, many opportunities to build bridges across disciplines. Because when I started Blueprint Earth, my biggest challenge was getting people not to fear the scale of our work, what we're trying to accomplish. Like clockwork, the biologists would say, oh yeah, no problem, we can catalog all the animals and plants and everything that's alive within a square kilometer. We can do that, there are ways. But how on earth are you gonna do the geology? The geologist said, oh yeah, we got this, no problem. But what are you gonna do? How are you gonna wrap your brain around the massive data set that's going to come from the atmosphere? The data scientists jump at the chance to work with such a large and diverse data set, but completely are mystified about how you replicate the sun in a controlled environment indoors. Give an engineer 30 seconds and they'd come up with a solution for replicating the sun. But when they thought about the scope of cataloging the biology, they were completely stumped. The power of crowdsourcing is what makes that effort more than a dog chasing its tail. The power of crowdsourcing allows us to find connection between seemingly unrelated aspects of an environment. And you know, the, the situations now that are so intricate, like the increasing demands that we have for fuel, for minerals, for food, for urban spaces, on, for environmental challenges, these things require big picture solutions that are too complex, too massive for any one person. The planetary renaissance is driven by the crowdsourced collective knowledge of humanity. And the third trait that I find that is going to spark the planetary renaissance and drive it forward is the desire that we have, the yearning for impact. We all want to know that what we do matters, it makes a difference. And you can see this in very simple, obvious places, like Facebook, for example. Anytime you change your profile picture to show support for a cause, your desire for impact really does shine through. But you still have to make that connection to actually make the impact. And the advent of technology now gives us a supercharged ways to impact the lives of others, to truly connect. So when we are attempting to find these connections, 
with the planetary renaissance that we're, we have in mind here. What will drive it forward is tapping into that desire, that yearning, that yearning for connection. Blueprint Earth connects in really unexpected ways sometimes for me. All I've had to do, you know, even though we work in environment, science, and education, the only thing I've had to do is tell people we need help. And we've worked with artists and writers and social media professionals, uh, media ex or marketing experts, um, lawyers, accountants, and more. And the thing that they all share in common, despite their diverse backgrounds, is a desire to truly make their mark on the world. They are putting their talents where their hearts are. While some people have painted the millennial generation as lazy and selfish, I've found the exact opposite to be true. People want the opportunity to get outdoors and to, to truly experience their environment in all its glory. Because millennials are digital natives, they understand that they have to make a genuine impact on the real world, the tangible world even more than previous generations in some cases. And millennials understand how to use the tools we now have at hand to simplify the process of connection. If we can visualize an entire environment, entire ecosystem in three dimensions on a computer, or better yet, let's print it out with a 3D printer, we can see and touch the connections that we've been searching for. It's pretty amazing. And we can tap into that yearning for deeper connection to drive the planetary renaissance forward. So I think, I think now I need to explain that the poet, William Blake, said it best. It was an incredible articulation of the connection between art and science. To see a world in a grain of sand, and a heaven in a wild flower. Hold infinity in the palm of your hand, and eternity in an hour. Connection is the heart of everything we do. Everything. Identifying connections and systems is what makes the world a better place. Finding these connections is what will spark this planetary renaissance, which we so sorely need. Our need for inspiration will push new discoveries, discoveries that cross multiple fields of research. The dialogue that naturally springs up from these discoveries will create crowdsourced ideas and innovation. The need to matter, the need to make a difference in the world, that is what is going to drive us forward, more and more people. And we need to just connect. We need to build a bridge across the chasms that exist between art and science, music and engineering, old and young, developed and developing countries. My faith is in the ability of humanity to continually reinvent itself. Our greatest assets are the ability to connect with the world around us. We need a planetary renaissance, and it is ripe to become our gift to the future. And it all starts with the recognition that we hold infinity in the palm of our hand. <laughs>